Track 3.14 Aluminium Cardboard Ceramic Concrete Copper Glass Gold Iron Leather Nylon Paper Plastic Rubber Steel Stone Wood Track 3.15 1 This is lovely. Isn't it lovely? What is it exactly? It's a coffee machine. Oh, yes, of course. Is it battery powered? No, it's mains powered. Look, the cable's here, under the base. If you press this button, the plug appears. That's clever. I love it. It's perfect for my kitchen at home. I'll come back later today and buy it. Would you like to try a cup before you go? I'm sorry? A cup of coffee. Oh, no thanks. I never drink coffee. Horrible stuff. 2. I see you're looking at the cycling machines. Cycling machines? Oh, yes. Yes, they're very nice, aren't they? A very unusual design. It will look great in your living room. You don't need to put it away if friends come to visit. Yes, I see. Good idea. And it's got a long handle. Is that for carrying it? Oh, no, that's the seat. Oh. It's leather. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, it's heavy, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it's got a triangular base that's made of iron. It allows you to cycle very fast without the whole thing shaking. Oh, and what are these buttons for? And that's the computer. If you choose Share Mode, it automatically posts your workout results on Facebook. I see. Yes, I really like it. The thing is, I joined a gym recently. Oh, right. But my son is trying to get fit, and he would use it, I'm sure. Track 3.16 1 it was really kind of you to lend me your laptop. I'm really grateful. 2. Please come to the shop with me. I really need your advice on what cooker to buy. And I don't want to go on my own. 3. This esport match is going to be tough. The other team are really strong. But I think you can win if you really want to. 4. I'm sorry, but my phone screen is not as large as advertised. Could you change it, please? 5. I'm sorry to hear that your new product has... Phone screen is not as large as advertised. Could you change it, please? 5. I'm sorry to hear that your new product hasn't been selling well. I know you're upset, but I'm sure things will be better soon. 6. It's great to see so many of you here today for the launch event. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you enjoy our new gadget today for the launch event. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you enjoy our new gadget. Enjoy our new gadget. Track 3.17 1 your poor eyesight is due to too much exposure to blue light. This has probably been caused by looking at digital screen too much, especially at night time. I can certainly prescribe some drugs that will help to better your eyesight. But initially, I'd like you to make some changes to your habits at work. Try to avoid sitting at your desktop or laptop for hours on end. 
You really should stop using mobile devices before bedtime. Try also to work in natural light as much as possible. Come back to me in three months. If your eyesight doesn't improve, we will consider a course of treatment at that point. 2. You'll be delighted to hear that the new multimedia classroom which the school purchased has finally come into use. It consists of an interactive board and 50 desktops, all of which are hooked up to the highest capacity internet network. It runs various self-study softwares of every single subject on the school's curriculum, so it is very useful for students to work on whatever aspect they need to improve. It'll also allow students to practice communicative skills of foreign languages. We were able to set up this multimedia classroom thanks to the money we made at the Christmas fair. We are very grateful to all the people who donated unwanted items for the stalls and who made all those delicious cakes and biscuits. Without you, we wouldn't have this wonderful self-study space. I'm sure this classroom will be in high demand from the word go. Track 3.18 The Telharmonium The Telharmonium was the world's first electronic musical instrument. It was designed by Thaddeus Cahill in 1897. Music from the instrument was broadcast to people's homes using a telephone. Before the invention of the radio, people loved these first home concerts. After Cahill's death in 1934, his brother kept one of the three models, but in 1962 it was destroyed. No recordings of the music were kept, so the telharmonium and its unique sound have disappeared forever. The Writing Ball Invented in 1865 by Rasmus Marling Hansen from Denmark, the writing ball was a machine for typing onto paper. Its use of electricity made the movement faster. However, you could not see the paper as you were typing. Nevertheless, the writing ball was very successful. Since each model was made by hand, it was soon replaced by other cheaper machines produced in factories. A new keyboard with a different key arrangement appeared. The once popular writing ball was forgotten. The Antikythera Mechanism In 1901, an ancient machine was discovered on a ship near the Greek island of Antikythera. It had been made about 1,900 years earlier, in 2 BCE. For many years after its discovery, nobody understood exactly what the machine was for. In the 1970s, scientists found that this ancient computer had been designed to predict the movements of the sun, the moon and the planets. It did this using more than 30 handmade metal wheels of different sizes. Reconstructions have been made and the device works perfectly. Track 3.19 Hello, can I help you? Yes, I bought this portable DVD player here six months ago and there's a problem with it. Oh dear, what's wrong with it? I can't switch it on. I press the on-off button and nothing happens. Let me have a look. Yes, you're right. Are the batteries fully charged? Yes, they are. It doesn't work even when the power lead is connected. Have you got the receipt? Yes. Um, here it is. I'd like to exchange it, please. I'm afraid that won't be possible. It's over a month old, you see. Is there anything else you can do? We can repair it for you. How long will that take? About two to three weeks. OK, then. Repair it, please. Track 3.20 Hello, how can I help you? I bought this tablet here last week. There's a problem with it. Oh, what's wrong with it? The screen is broken. Look. How did that happen? I dropped it. Oh, dear. 
Well, we can repair it for you, but you'll have to pay for the repair. Why? It's only a week old. Can I have my money back, please? No, I'm afraid you can't. You broke it, you see. It isn't a fault with the tablet. But it shouldn't break when you drop it, and it was in its case. The glass is very delicate. It can break quite easily. I'm very sorry, but there's nothing I can do. Can I exchange it, please? No, as I said, we can repair it, but we'll have to charge you. Well, how much will it cost? About eighty pounds, I think. Eighty pounds? Well, I'm not happy about that. Can I see the manager, please? He isn't in the shop at the moment. Well, if you won't exchange it or give me a refund, I'm going to write to the manager. As you wish. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye. Track three point twenty one. Virtual museums go back to the nineteen fifties, when early experiments of virtual reality were carried out. One typical example being the Sensorama machines developed by an American inventor. In nineteen ninety two, the Apple Computer Inc. released the Virtual Computer, a CD ROM which displays some three D modeled scientific exhibits in an environment similar to a museum. The virtual computer has been considered the first digital virtual museum, covering themes such as medicine, plant growth, and space. Another well-known example was the Guggenheim Virtual Museum by Asymptote Architecture in 1999. When the internet gained popularity and became more widespread in the 1990s, online virtual museums came into existence, including the Museum of Computer Art (U.S.). Founded in 1993, and the Web Museum, initially named Web Louvre, which was launched in 1994. Most physical museums now offer virtual tours. These virtual museums provided endless education and entertainment opportunities to people around the world during the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. Track 3.22. Like physical museums. Virtual museums can transport visitors to the past. For example, the Museum of Flight, Seattle, USA, shows its visitors the early days of aviation history. But virtual museums have a number of benefits. To begin with, they enable people to admire precious heritages around the world without doing any damage to them. Thanks to virtual museums, archaeological sites are visually accessible to the public while remaining perfectly preserved. The Terracotta Warriors and Horses Museum in China, for example, gives visitors a virtual experience of swooping into the tomb, walking among the terracotta soldiers, and viewing their facial expressions. In addition. Virtual museums offer education and entertainment at the same time, making learning more enjoyable and making information memorable. Last but not least, virtual museums are accessible regardless of the time and location. Vietnamese students can easily explore the Natural History Museum in London without having to travel to the UK.